Okay, let's look specifically at the alkanes now. They're, they have what's called a general formula that looks like this. C, let me switch to my right pen here, CnH2n plus 2. Now the n here is just referring to the number of carbons. So if we were talking about, for example, let's say I told you that you had octane, well, I know that oct means there's eight carbons. So this is C8, and N is now my eight. So if I want to find the number of H's, I have to go two times N, which is 16, plus two, which means it will be 18. So if you know the general formula, you can look at a name like octane, and very quickly come up with its molecular formula to know what it should be made of. It also helps you if you're given an, a formula to be able to figure out if it's an alkane or not. So for example, I could tell you uh, C12H24, is that an alkane? Well, if it was an alkane, the hydrogens would have to be double the amount of carbons plus two, which in this case they're not, they're only doubled. So this is not an alkane. But if I were to give you C12H26, that one would be an alkane. So knowing that general formula helps you shortcut a few things uh, in that way. The next thing, the, the defining feature of the alkanes though, is that they only have single bonds between carbons. These bonds right here, doesn't matter the bonds between H's or other things, but these bonds right here have to always be single bonds. That's what makes the alkanes the alkanes. That's kind of their family uh, property or uh, structure. Kind of like how certain families look a certain way or laugh a certain way. This is this, the structural thing that makes the alkanes the alkanes. It also um, makes them what we call saturated. So in an alkane, because all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, the carbons will be completely full with usually hydrogens. If they're just a straight hydrocarbon alkane, then they'll be completely full like this. So we call them saturated molecules. Some of the molecules we'll talk about later are, are different, but the alkanes specifically are called saturated molecules because the C, the carbons are full of as much stuff as they can possibly hold. They're using all of their four bonds to hold separate things. Now, because there are bigger molecules, that means that we can find isomers for most of our alkanes. And I covered this a little bit before, but now that you know naming, the easiest way to know if you have a new isomer is to know if you have a new name. So let me do our C5H12 example again. So here was C5H12, the simplest one, and that's just five carbons in a chain. And because it's five carbons, this is called pentane. So to get the next branch, I'm gonna break off this carbon right here and make a new parent that's now four carbons, but with a branch. Now, I could maybe think about putting the branch there, but if I put the branch on carbon one like that, this would still be my longest chain. It's still a pentane molecule, I've just bent it. So that doesn't work. I can't put the branch on carbon one, but I could put it here and then fill this all up with my hydrogens. So now this is a four carbon parent with a methyl branch on carbon two. So this would be a two methyl, and because it's four carbons, it would be a butane. Now we can try moving the branch around. So what if I did this again? The same four carbon molecule, but I put the branch there instead. Well, in this case, it wouldn't be a different molecule because I would, instead of numbering like I did on this other one, one, two, 
to give it the lowest number, I would start numbering here going one, two, to give it the lowest number. So this would still be 2-methylbutane. So since it's the same name, it's actually the same molecule, just a mirror image, just a flipped over one. So that doesn't work. Let's remove that. So I can't move the branch anymore. So the only other option is to take another carbon off as a branch and move it. So now I have a three carbon parent and two methyl branches. So this would be a two comma two dash dimethyl. And because it's a three carbon parent, it's a propane. So here I had a five carbon parent, here's a four carbon parent, and now a three carbon parent. So that's kind of how I would break down most isomers. Start with this, the longest, easiest kind of one to deal with, and then go from there into some more simpler ones. All right, now let's take a look at some examples. Here is the first example in your notes. Take a, look, uh, take a second on your own. See if you can find what's the longest carbon chain that you can make out of this molecule. If you said three, you're right. And it doesn't matter which three you chose in this case. I'm gonna choose these three. But if you chose that one up above, that's fine too. So remember that every end or bend in a line diagram is a carbon. So I would number this carbon one, carbon two, and carbon three. And it wouldn't have mattered again if I started on the right because the branch would still be on carbon two. So now I have a one carbon branch on carbon two. So that's going to be a methyl. So a two dash methyl. And my parent is a three carbon, so it's a propane molecule. So the correct name for this molecule would be 2-methylpropane. Now there are some occasions where we don't need the numbers, and this is one of those. If you put a number on an assignment, I will never mark it wrong. It's just unnecessary in this case. And let me show you why. We can just call this methylpropane because I would infer that I know where the branch is because I know the branch can't go on carbon one because if it did, it would become part of the parent. It would become a four carbon chain and I know that it can't go on carbon three for the same reason. So since the branches can't be on one or three in this case, even though I didn't say two, that's fine because it's the only place that that methyl branch can go and be named properly. So this could either be two methylpropane, I would accept that fine, or just methylpropane, either one of those is acceptable. Okay. Here's another example. This one's in condensed structural diagram. So our H's aren't, are shown in their groups, but not all coming off of the carbons. Remember that our first step is always to find the longest carbon chain that we can make. So go ahead and try and figure that out. You should have got five. And these are the five I selected. If you chose the five with the carbon going down, it won't change the number at all. Hopefully you can start to see now, just a little more intuitively, where you would start to number. If I start numbering from the right, the carbon with the branch is gonna be carbon four. If I start numbering from the left, the carbon with the branch will be carbon number two. So since that's lower, I would number this one, two, three, four, Five. So it's a five carbon pentane parent, and I have a branch on carbon two, so that is a two, and it's a one carbon branch, so that's meth YL because it's a branch. 
So the name of this one would be 2-methyl pentane. And the number here is necessary because the branch could have been on 2 or it could have been on 3. It wouldn't be on 4 because if it was on 4, we would have numbered it as 2. So the options here are 2 or 3. And so I have to specify which one it is. So this is a 2-methyl pentane. Okay, here's the next example in your notes. So here our longest carbon chain is going to be 5 carbons. So this is a pentane parent. And now we have a branch that's a 2-carbon branch. So it's an ethyl branch. And if you look at the parent, it doesn't matter which side we number from, this will be carbon three, whether we start from the right or the left. So this is a three dash ethyl branch. So the name here would be three ethyl pentane. That one's pretty straightforward. All right, this next one's more challenging. Take a moment on this one. See if you can find the longest carbon chain that's possible. And making sure that in that longest carbon chain, whatever are the branches are something that you would be able to number. Hopefully you got the longest carbon chain should be seven. So in this case, I chose this chain of seven. And that's because that leaves me with three different branches that I can very easily name. There are two one carbon branches and one two carbon branch. So that's my parent. It has, um, seven carbons, so I need to know if I should number from the left or from the right. If I start from the left, I will have branches on two, three, and five. If I number from the right, I will have branches on three, five, and six. So the first one gives me the lowest numbers, so I would number this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and it's going to be a heptane parent. Now for my branches, I have two one carbon branches. So this one is a two methyl. This is a five methyl. And this branch is a two carbon branch on three, so it's a three ethyl. Now, to put this all together, remember we start with the branches with the lowest name uh, alphabetically, the one that will come first alphabetically. So in this case, that's ethyl branches. So this is a three ethyl. Then I go to my methyl branches, and because there's two of them, I have to use two numbers. So that's a two comma five dimethyl. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have to name the parent, which is the heptane. So a 3 ethyl 2 5 dimethyl heptane is the name of that molecule. Now, don't let this part right here mess you up. Even though this is a dimethyl, we don't go by the di in terms of alphabetical, or it would go before the ethyl. We just go by the branch name, and the branch is still a methyl branch, so it still comes after ethyl. So those are the four examples. <coughs> the four at the bottom, or the table at the bottom, is learning how to draw these out. So um, probably should have broken this up into two videos, but let's go through those really quickly. See if you can do those first on your own. Maybe pause the video here and try to fill those out. And then unpause the video and I'll show you what they should look like.
Okay, here's the first one, 3-ethylhexane. You can see in the structural diagram that it has, I just drew the simplest one, the 6 straight across for the parent, and then a 2-carbon branch coming off of carbon number 3. Make sure that this is structural, so you have to show all the carbon bonds as well as each individual hydrogen bond. In the condensed, I've just grouped them together. So, for example, in that first carbon, there are three hydrogens, so it becomes a CH3. The next one only has two, so it's a CH2. Then CH, because this one only has one H, everything else is a carbon bonded to it, and so on to draw that one out. The one that's a little bit trickier for some students to get used to is the line diagram. So I always start with the parent as kind of a zigzag. So in this case, it's six carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and then I have a two carbon branch coming off of the third carbon. So there's one carbon and then a two carbon. So carbon bonds tend to follow kind of a hexagon sort of shape. So if you're drawing these out, those are good angles to use as, as at least partial uh, hexagon sort of shapes. So that's how I would draw that one. Now let me show you the other one. Okay, here's the second one, the 3-ethyl-2,4-dimethylpentane. Uh, you'll notice right away that I alternate my branches if I can, just to keep things less crowded. So I've put this first methyl branch going up, and then the ethyl branch going down, and then the other methyl branch going up. That just helps me keep things a little less cluttered, a little bit easier to see. If you draw all three of those branches going up, it gets quite hard to tell what where the hydrogens are. Are they attached to that carbon or this one? And so if you can space things out, the more you can, the easier it is to be able to read. On the condensed structural, the thing to be careful of is all of these hydrogens here are all just single H's because each of those carbons is already forming three carbon bonds or bonds with other carbons, there's only room for one H on each one of those. So make sure when you draw it out, those are CHs. Uh, this one is a CH2 coming down in the branch here. And then all of the external ones should be CH3s. All right, now the line diagram for this would be five carbons. So one, two, three, or five. I have a methyl branch on two and four and then I have an ethyl branch coming off of three. So that's how I would draw that as a line diagram. So again make sure that you're comfortable with all of the three types of drawing both structural, condensed structural, and line and make sure you understand the, the basics of the naming rules. If you have any questions, please ask me because this is just going to keep building as we add in more families and more rules and more things in the coming lessons. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I, I hope that makes sense. And if there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know.